Welcome back to Give Me Five with Jones and Eli, guest pod edition. And boy, have we got a special one for you today. Great friend of the pod, Yankees first round pick in 2022 and number one overall prospect in the Yankees organization, Spencer Jones. Spence, thank you so much for being with us today. And we've got a question for you. Superstitions, do they work? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. But so superstitions are funny. Um, baseball usually gets the rep that, you know, everybody's su- very superstitious, this, that, or whatever. But I like to think it, it's very, uh, we're very routine oriented people. So we like to do the same things because, you know, we're usually playing at the same time every single night. So you'll hear stories about guys eating the same meals every day, doing this at a certain time, doing that. And a lot of people see that as superstition. But for us, it's really just, a routine. So like for me personally, like I ate the same meals when I left the house every day, six days of the week that when we were playing. And yeah, I mean, I get dressed the same way every single day. It's just what I'm comfortable with. Because in the moment, you just have to be comfortable. You got to go out there and perform. And for a lot of the guys, they just find one way that works, one way that you've had success. And you just kind of carry that one over day after day, game after game. I feel like that comes down to then almost more like a mental thing than even a physical thing, right? I feel like a lot of it also has to do with the mental thing. I know um, in a sport like baseball or something where it's, you're doing skill and it's a lot mentally, um, you have to be locked in and checked in at all times. If you're doing something for the game, even if that's not physically helping you at all, it's almost like a placebo in a sense of you feel like you're yourself, you feel like you're doing something. And if you don't do that, you're going to switch off mentally maybe or think, trick yourself into thinking that there's something wrong. Whereas I feel like superstitions outside of sports, outside of baseball, you know, if you're flying on a plane, I always, before I fly on a plane, do certain things or whatever. And that's just silly because there's... <laughs> I'm so curious I, what you do. If I like touch the plane or, you know, <laughs> do whatever, like if I do that before a flight, it's not helping the flight. That there's a chance of crashing. It's not any more or less likely if I do that. Whereas baseball, I think it does impact because it's mental, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I... I, uh, I think uh, there was, like Spence was talking about, like you, you have those multiple things you do before every game. I know like Wade Boggs was very famous for, he took batting practice, same time every day, 517, ate fried chicken before every game. He took 150 ground balls. That was exactly what he did before every game. So Spence, can I hear more about what you do? You say, what's, what's the pregame meal? What's the dressing routine? I want to know it all. <laughs> okay, yeah. So pregame meal normally, um, when I would have at home, I had this um, company that was giving me food that I would have before the games. And it would usually be steak and chicken, either quesadilla or a taco. I would eat that. Then I would go to the field and I would be there early. And some days we lift, some days we weren't. But um, like before the game, my routine or when it comes to game time, when I knew, you know, seven o'clock start. All right. It's six o'clock. That's when it starts or at least for me, that was like my funnel into game mode. It was like I would have my beet juice at like 620. At that time, I would have already been out of the shower. I put my socks on to the same song every single day. And then that would go to it was a choreographed playlist to kind of build me up into game time. So it would be I had a song for my socks and sliding shorts and they would move into my jersey. I would have that on. And then by the time that song would end, it would be my next one. When I organized all my things that I needed to go to pregame batting practice, I would do that, come back inside, roll out for a minute, chill out. And then I'll go into the training room, get my wrist tape or whatever I needed to get done before the game. And then from there, it was just the same walk every single day with the same two people go out there. And I pretty much did the same stretching routines every single day to get my body ready, get my arm ready, get the bat ready. And then it was game time. I'm just so curious to like, how did these things develop? And just as humans in general, how do superstitions even develop? Is it one day you went out there and had this meme before the game and you hit eight home runs that day and you said, let me do that again (laughs) tomorrow? Or, Or how does these things, how do these come about? Yeah, I mean, it is trial and error. It's just whatever you try to do to make yourself the most comfortable to like where you feel like you are in the moment the most is what I try to pursue for me, like as an athlete, because you want to be there, you want to be where your feet are, you want to be able to focus, you want to make, you know, quick decisions athletically. And so it was a lot of trial and error. Like there's a couple of things that I did in college that I don't do anymore. There's a couple of things that did work for me in college that I still do. And so it's just playing around with it. 
um, not taking it too seriously if you, if you miss one piece, but it's, it's almost like you don't think about it. You just kind of go about your business and you do it. And that just becomes part of your preparation and what you do. Yeah. So Spence, I told Eli, uh, before the pod that I think, I think superstitions are bullshit overall, uh, <laughs> generally in life. And I think, I think in baseball, like what you're saying makes total sense. And it's definitely different as an athlete. But how often do you have superstitions that spill over into into real life? Do you have any things that that make things happen? Like, do you touch the plane like Eli? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think I have anything too like superstitious in real life. It's just really like you know, just life routine stuff, you know. And that's just you know the basics for everybody. But as far as superstitions, I actually do have one on the plane, which is actually really funny. You mentioned that um, when I was a kid, my mom said that you know, like the little circular buttons on the inside of the seat. My mom said, if you press that, the plane will take off faster. And <laughs> ever since then, I've always pressed the button on the side of the seat so the plane would take off a little bit faster. Still? <laughs> Still do it, yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's amazing. I, 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 don't, I really don't think I have any like those. Um, how, do you think, um, like, stepping on a crack, anything like that, walking under a ladder, you never think twice when that happens? I, I try to believe that ignorance is bliss in those situations. I kind of pretend that I didn't see it or that it didn't happen. Because, you know, like the occasional black cat will come out of the alleyway when you're walking past it. And you always pretend to try and forget about it opposed to, you know, fixating yourself on the bad omen. You know what I mean? But so those those things then, like, it, again, you're kind of touching on the... I think there's a difference between superstition and routine, like you talked about. Because I think the thing with routine, and that speaks to the baseball stuff you were talking about, is just we want to feel comfortable in all these... In, in day-to-day life. And that can be, even on a plane, there can be some sort of routine. You know, there's a routine of going to the airport and giving your passport and going in the gate. And so you want to have a routine yourself maybe. But then there are all these things, like you talk about the black cat, walking under a ladder, throwing salt over your shoulder, whatever. Like, that's just crazy. Do we really, do people really think, and you know, knocking on wood? I always knock on wood. And I don't even know why. It's just, I, I don't understand why we've like come up with these things as a society that we have convinced ourselves will help us. And for what reason? Yeah, I mean, I still knock on wood. You you kind of have to. I feel like that one's but that why? one's like, like the non-negotiable. Like I, <laughs> I could tell you. It, uh, you know, I actually looked it up. The reason is that people thought there were spirits in wood. So if you knock it, the good spirits come and the bad spirits run away. So I I, I don't know um, quite how we That's got like there. A, it's like a bad luck thing, though. Like there's a lot of superstitions like that that are like if you don't do this, you'll have bad luck. If you don't do this, do you believe then, Spencer? Like before a game, if you don't do your exact same thing, you're going to have bad luck? Or do you just think you're just not going to be as focused or as locked in? It's, yeah, it's just like a preparation thing. I don't feel like I'm as prepared today as I was yesterday. So it's not like a luck-related thing? No, not as not as much luck as I'd like it to be. (laughs) Spence, what's what's the craziest thing you've seen a guy do before the game? Um... Well, like the the funny stereotypical one is, you know, guys will bring their bats home and sleep with them and then put them in the seatbelt and drive them to the fields and eat dinner with them, that kind of thing. Um, that's a pretty funny one. Uh, my favorite, my personal favorite one is the slump shower. So whenever you're struggling for beyond two weeks and it's getting to the middle of that third week and you're still not getting it, um, guys will take showers in their full uniform. And so post game, you're sweaty, you know, everybody's already changed out and showering. You grab the chair from your locker, you put it in the showers and you just take a nice seated shower in uniform to wash off whatever bad things have been happening to you for the past couple of weeks. Does it work? It actually did work. Um, I, you, I didn't have you to, did this? I didn't hit the slump shower. No, my buddy <laughs> did. It was uh, after a long week in Brooklyn and he was like, man, I need it. And so he just went in. Sat down in his chair, jersey on, and next couple of days he was, you know, racking up extra base hits and home runs. It was crazy. <laughs> and when guys do that in the locker room, like, are other guys looking around and being like, oh, you know, Johnny's in the slump shower. What's the deal with him? Or do they just respect <laughs> it and say, oh, he needs that you right You got to look away, right? Like, can't be a part of that. No, I mean, you got to you gotta respect. It's, you know, it's you're, you're trying to get it done for yourself, right? You're trying to get yourself in the best possible position. And for some people, it's just like a little change of routine, whether that be, you know, the slump shower or not. When I, when I saw the guy going in for the slump shower, I had to, you know, I had to hang out. I had to ask questions. I had to be around it. I thought it was awesome. 
That's great. I, I got to know. what are the, So you said there's an order of the songs. There's the sock song and the pants song. G- give us a little playlist here. <laughs> um, it was uh, right when Moneybag released his last album. Um, it was They Say was the song I put onto my socks and sliding shorts. And then it was Shoal Is when I put the pants and jersey on. And then F My BM when I was leaving the locker room. And you never, got, t- you never, you never got tired of the songs? Didn't get tired of it. Just put me in a good place, ready to go play. There you go. Well, if you ever want to hear a great playlist, check out Spencer Jones' Getting Dressed playlist, and you will not catch him in the slump shower. You absolutely (laughs) will not. This has been Gimme 5 with Jones and Eli. A very special thanks to Spencer Jones for coming on today. A reminder to follow us on Instagram and TikTok for a chance to suggest our next pod topic. Fellas, thanks for talking. Thank you.